astronauts landed on the moon and built their own bases many years before the first Apollo astronauts landed on the moon in 1969 as the result of a secret treaty between the Pentagon and the Zetans. The Zetans helped the Department of Majority colonize the moon with secret bases and in exchange the Pentagon's Majority Department helped the Zetans colonize the United States with their own secret underground bases. The Pentagon decided that cooperating with the Zetans was a better idea than being invaded. The Zetans showed the Pentagon scientists how to construct nuclear and mercury-powered sources, as well as space shuttles, rockets, and other NASA technology that was inferior to the anti-gravity magnetic-powered sources of the Zetans, and thus at a military disadvantage. Of course, our presidents did not want to go on the 6 o'clock news to talk about how they made a top-secret treaty with a violent conquering foreign planet that in the past nuked the Earth people. Not a bad reason for a big secret. The Pentagon's secret sources were also aided by captured Nazi rocket scientists who were testing sources they got from the Zetan instructors in 1944, when the Zetans had the Nazis do their genetic experiments for them, much easier than abductions. The primitive sources, rockets, and shuttles of the Pentagon insiders, often mistaken for real UFOs, made it to the Moon and Mars. In May 1962, a secret spacecraft from the Pentagon landed on Mars and videotaped it, and I have seen the actual video. It shows a landscape far different than what NASA showed us. Mars had canals, lakes, green vegetation, swamps, and animal life on the surface, but NASA the disinformation agency wants you to believe it is a dead world, so you will not expect aliens to live there. They have never shown the public most of the 2000 photos they promised us with Viking 1. When the first Apollo astronauts landed on our moon in 1969, they were shocked to find it already inhabited. Thousands of Americans, Soviets, British, French, and Australians were already living there. Astronauts who discovered too much truth and were considered security risks died in those famous accidents in the shuttle or on the launch pad, etc. The footage of the American spacecraft landing on Mars before Apollo landed on the moon leaked out in major public British TV for one evening, thanks to a smuggling scientist, before it was censored and never made it to America. British authorities tried to call it a hoax to cover up the leak, but it was no hoax. The only astronaut who has ever died outside of duty said it was the truth on video, and he was silenced. We have seen that interview too, as well as a secret video stewing the scientist who leaked the video being assassinated. A book exposing Alternative 3 appeared in 1976 and was quickly forced out of print. I have read it. You can't even order it, and the printers will not issue a new release in spite of a huge demand. Very strange to turn down that big profit. Not really. On Public France in 13 the on August 3rd, 1962, at 8.0am, and also in the weekly magazine Le Miller, was another leak that was covered up fast. Elaine Ash reported why, has no one spoken of the mysterious message heard on the moon 20 untranslatable words? Perhaps it proves that other men exist, something that NASA wished to hide, words which really, sowed the seeds of panic. Everything was going well that day on our moon, then at 11, 15 an extraordinary fading occurred, and contact with Houston was lost. Worden, who was in charge of telecommunications, had his attention drawn by a breathing sound and a long whistle. A sentence was constantly repeated on one note, varying from a small to a shrill tone, and from lightly stressed sounds to raucous exclamations. Luckily the transmission was recorded on Lim's tape recorder, and word and transmitted it to NASA here of the eight separate words, Mara Rabbi Alidi Dini and the Risa Kaunzalim. Why did the Berlin Wall come down so suddenly and unexpectedly with a Cold War ending, and enemies becoming friends? Did President Reagan give a clue at his speech at the 42nd session of the General Assembly of the United Nations on September 21, 1987, saying in our obsessions with antagonisms of the moment, we often forget much unites the members of all humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. I occasionally think that how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet I ask, is not an alien force already among us? In Reagan's speech on December 4, 1985, he stated if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet, we'd forget all the little 
local differences that we had between our countries. Soviet President Gorbachev publicly stated at our meeting in Geneva, the US President said that, if the Earth faced an invasion by extraterrestrials, the US and Soviet Union would join forces to repel the invasion. February 6, 1987 in Soviet life. I absolutely emphasize that you have nothing to fear of the Zetan invasion, as the United Confederation of Planets the Fremy Aliens plans to remove all of them from Earth in 1993. Well, it's 2010 now, and they are still here. This is not for the general public use common sense, wisdom, discretion in spreading this information, while avoiding skeptics, paranoid types, religious fanatics, and the emotionally unstable. Civilizations on Mars in 1959 a flying disk spacecraft from Mars reportedly landed in the wilderness outside of Moscow in the Soviet Union where a secret meeting with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev was arranged. The conference regarded improving relations with Earth, exchanging knowledge, and securing world and interplanetary peace, yet the Soviet government rejected the terms. This report originated from Sergeant Willard Wanor, formerly of Army Intelligence, who investigated UFOs in Hawaii while in the military in the 1950s and met with us while we were in the Department of Interplanetary Affairs Research Agency in the 1970s. On April 24, 1964, an oval-shaped metallic flying object landed in a farm field in Newark Valley in New York State and two alien beings emerged from the estimated 20-foot long craft. Farmer Gary Wilcox drove his tractor toward the object clearly visible on a bright sunny day. The farmer kicked the metallic object to make sure it was real. The two occupants were about four feet high and they carried a square tray full of the different vegetables they had collected from his farm. Wilcox reported that when he confronted the beings stealing his crops, they said don't be alarmed, we have spoken to people before. Gary described the voices as being very strange. They wore white metallic looking overalls without seams, stitching or pockets. He could not see their hands or feet. He could not see their other features beneath the full space suits, which we speculated were protecting these aliens from the Earth's atmosphere deadly to their race. As Wilcox became inquisitive, one of them stated, We are from what you know as the planet Mars. We can only come to Earth every two years, and left a warning that Turf people should stay out of space. They said that they were studying the organic materials on Earth because of the rocky structure of Mars and that they did not fly near our cities because they avoided the air pollution. The beings told Wilcox everything in one zone. He asked if he could go with them and they rejected. Wilcox gave the beings a bag of fertilizer and exchanged information about it and other subjects before they entered the craft and took off. Wilcox was investigated by a psychiatrist and the sheriff department who found him a normal, truthful person with no emotional problems and they confessed they believed his UFO experience was real. In February 1972, United Nations diplomat Farida Reiskiewicz, who investigated UFOs and occupant contacts for the President of the General Assembly, told me and my department agents that she had been contacted by a landed spacecraft from the planet Mars. The reported contact took place in the Mojave Desert, in California, in 1971, and made the front page of the major Arizona newspaper the Daily Arizona Republic. This story also made the front page of the San Clement Sun Post in an article, written by Fred Swickles, who covered President Nixon and his staff at the Western White House. Farida stated that the alien offered to admit an ambassador to their interplanetary confederation in this solar system, in exchange for an alien ambassador to the General Assembly of the United Nations, in an attempt to re-establish diplomatic relations with Earth and other planets that had been suspended in ancient times due to hostility on Earth. However, the terms of this peace arrangement were not acceptable to the Security Council, and the exchange was rejected in a secret meeting. Adam Malik, President of the United Nations, was in favor of the treaty and exchange, and he was in contact with us on this matter. My Skiavid and Malik were frustrated with UN attempts to block this exchange, so they came to us to help try to establish a civilian council to handle affairs between the people on Earth and the Interplanetary Confederation in this solar system. 
the corporations and military government interests that finance and control the UN did not accept the alien insistence on destroying all weapons, ending all wars, and eliminating all polluting fuels, which are all the biggest bank accounts in the world. The most famous astronomers of the early 20th century, including the great Percival Lovell, stated there were signs of intelligent life on Mars. They reported huge areas of green vegetation that expanded and contracted with the melting of the ice caps and the four seasons on Mars. In the 1950s, teachers in public schools in America taught students that the temperature at the equator was about 80 degrees. The man credited with inventing the radio, Marconi, published data that he believed he had received intelligent radio signals from the 